Okay, so let's be start third talk. Okay. The third speaker of today is Senjo Shimizu from Kyoto University, and she will talk on free boundary problem for the incompressible fluid. Please start. Thank you. Can you hear my voice? Yes. Ah, thank you. So, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers of this conference inaugural meeting of Asian Oceanian Women in Mathematics. It is great that AOWM has been founded. I wish for its development as one member of this association. Today, I'd like to talk about free boundary problems for the incompressible phrase. It is a joint work with Professor Takayoshi Ogawa at Tohoku University. Let Omega Note be the initial domain. It is equal to Rn plus half space, it is the half space, where n is greater than or equal to two. We can also consider the initial domain such that for a given function, eta not of y prime here, namely yn is greater than given function eta not of y prime. Today, for simplicity, I consider the initial domain is the half space Rn plus. It is considered that the initial domain is filled with fluid. So physically, we take positive direction of Yn downwards. We consider the problem to find the domain omega sub t for a positive time t and to find the velocity vector u bar and the pressure p bar. Eta bar, which is the height, height function, is also unknown, but after the Lagrangian transformation, eta bar disappears under the kinematic boundary condition here. U bar and P bar satisfy the Navier-Stokes equations. The first equation is describes the conservation of momentum. The second equation is conservation of mass. The third equation is the condition of the free boundary. The normal direction of the stress tensor vanishes of the free boundary. Here, stress tensor capital T is here. The first equation is the kinematic boundary condition, which shows that the normal velocity of the boundary equals the magnitude of the velocity vector to the minus unit outer normal. The fifth and the sixth equations are initial conditions. I call this problem FNS, abbreviation of a free boundary problem of the Navier-Stokes equations. In this talk, I'd like to consider global in-time existence of free boundary problem of Navier-Stokes equations for a small initial data in a scale invariant space for a not bounded domain close to the house space.
free boundary problem of the Navier Stokes equations is one of the classical important problems. So there are more corresponding results. Only related works are cited in the list. For a drop problem, Pioneer's works were done by Solonikov, then Denisova Solonikov, Muhajan Tskovsky, Padura Solonikov, Shibata myself, Kune plus Birk, obtained global well portedness or stability in these function spaces. For an awesome problem with the bottom, so just uh, like C in the figure, Pioneer's work were done by B. Then Alain, Tani Tanaka, Tani Sylvester, Abelus, Gotis, Saito obtained local and global well poisonous. For ocean problems without the bottom, Bruce Simone and myself obtained local well portedness for a two phase problem. For an unbounded general domain, Shibata obtained global well portedness. Today's our problem belongs to ocean problems without the bottom. Now we consider scale invariant spaces for the Navier Stokes equations. The Navier Stokes equations have parabolic scale, lambda squared t, and lambda y. Now we back to the Navier Stokes equation. Here, divergence of stress tensor is equal to minus Laplacian of U bar plus gradient of P bar under the assumption of the free divergence free condition. So the linear term is dt of U bar and minus Laplacian U bar and gradient P bar. from the balance of these linear terms and the nonlinear term. Nonlinear term is only the convection term, u bar dot gradient of u bar. Then u sub lambda is equal to lambda multiplied by u bar and p sub lambda is lambda squared is multiplied by p bar. This is scale invariant, invariant scaling of the Navier-Stokes equations. Plug in u bar sub lambda and p bar sub lambda in the Navier Stokes equations, we know that LR in time and H dot SP in space with 2 over R plus N over P equals 1 plus S are the scale invariant spaces where H dot SP space is a space such that all the S weak derivative belongs to p square integrable function space LP. Previous results were solved in the class that LR in space W2P, LR in time W2P in space intersection W1R in time 
LP in space. Where R is greater than two and P is greater than N because using the embedding relation. Hence, it seems to be difficult to solve in a scale invariant space. We would like to solve the free boundary problem FNS in the scale critical space. So we choose R equals infinity and then S equals minus one plus N over PP. This space is here and take R equals one and S equals one plus N over PP. This space is here. We are P dot minus one plus N over P P one space is the homogeneous base of space where the upper minus one plus N over P is differentiability, lower left P is integrability and lower right one means small L1. B dot minus one plus N over B P one space is included in H dot minus one plus N over B P and has the same scale. The reason why we choose R equals one is that nonlinearity consists of the time integral of the first derivative of the velocity. Results in scaling invariant class for free boundary of Navier-Stokes equations are Danshan Hiba Muha Tolukstov and Ogawa myself up to now. First, we transfer free boundary Navier-Stokes Navier -Stokes problem into the fixed boundary problem by using Lagrangian transform. Eulerian coordinates y is given by the solution of the ordinary differential equation with initial value Lagrangian coordinate x. We set u of tx equals u bar ty and p of tx equals p bar ty. We denote Jacobi matrix dy dx by j of du. Then gradient y of u bar is equal to transposed of inverse matrix of J of du operated to gradient X of U. In this case, the determinant of the Jacobi matrix du equals one. So transposed of inverse of Jacobi matrix is equal to cofactor of Jacobi matrix of du. This is the Lagrangian transformed problem of free boundary problem of Navier-Stokes equations. Since the IJ component of Jacobi matrix is given by Dirac's delta plus time integrals of the first derivative of U, identity minus inverse of the Jacobi matrix given by the multiple of the time integral of the first derivative of the velocity. So we can write the nonlinear terms, 
the such the like this. Namely, all nonlinear terms are quasi-linear, where their coefficients are multiproducts of time integral of the first derivative of the velocity. I call this problem transformed problem of Navier-Stokes equations TNS. Before stating our main results, let me introduce vessel spaces and resulting trivial spaces in the half space and on the half line. Let Phj of x be little to pere dyadic decomposition for x. The homogeneous vessel space B dot SP sigma of Rn of F childa is given by by the convolution F childa taking LP norm first and then taking small L sigma norm with weight two to the power SJ. The homogeneous space of space in the half space Rn plus is taking infimum of B dot SP sigma of Rn norm of F childa, where F childa is equal to F for positive Xn and any extension for negative Xn. Then we consider we uh, define the homogeneous resulting trivial space F dot SP sigma. Let PCK be the little to pere dyadic decomposition for time. F dot SP sigma for whole line R is like this, PCK convolution F childa, capital X norm. First, taking small L sigma with weight two to the power SK. Then after we take LP norm, with respect to time. The homogeneous resulting trivial space F dot SP sigma in the half line R plus is taking infimum of F dot SP sigma of whole line R norm, where F childa is equal to F for positive time T and any extension for negative time t. This is our main result. Global well positiveness of transposed problem of Navier-Stokes equations. The dimension n is greater than or equal to two. Integrability p is greater than n minus one and less than to n minus one. For the initial data, you note belongs to p dot minus one plus n over p p one. If its initial data is sufficiently small, then transpose the problem admits a unique global solution with its estimate. These classes are given by maximal L1 regularity theorem. Okay. 
So the second derivative you belongs to L1 and B dot minus one plus N over baby P1. So the first derivative of U belongs to this class. Where P dot N over B P1 is embedded into CV, it is continuous function with vanishing at infinity. This shows U is Lipschitz continuous function for almost all time. Therefore, the ordinary differential equation solves uniquely global in time. As a corollary of the main theorem, we obtain global well-portedness of ordinary free boundary problem of Navier-Stokes equations. N and P is a same as theorem one. For the same epsilon not in theorem one, the initial data U not sufficiently small and let UP be the global solution of transport problem obtained in theorem one. Then the pullback U bar P bar of UP satisfies the original problem FNS. Tansan Hiba Muhat Orkstorf obtained similar results, but completely different method from ours. Our result contained P equals N. This means we can catch the solution zero and negative order of the best of space. So now uh, we would like to uh, show the key part of this problem. In order to solve the problem, maximal regularity is the key point for a linear problem. Let capital X be a Banach space and A be a generator of analytic semigroup on capital X. We consider the Cauchy problem one. We see that A has maximal LR regularity if for a given function F, F belongs to LR with values X, the left-hand side, the time derivative U and AU has the same regularity F. In view of analytic semigroup theory, if F belongs to F theta, there is a solution of one in this class. So in the semigroup theory, F is a little bit higher regularity, what time? Cis theta. This semigroup theory is work, works very well for a semilinear equation. But for a quasi-linear equation, we have to consider a exponential to the power minus ta. It accords singularity 
1 over t as t equals 0. But maximal LR regularity resolves a singularity like this equation, inequality. So maximal regularity is strong uh, method to solve Kazilinia equation. Theory of maximal regularity has been established for R between one and infinity and UMD Banaha space capital X. But for R equals one, it is different story. In our result, we obtain maximal L1 regularity for the Stokes equations. The linear problem is this given by these Stokes equations. To solve nonlinear problem, we need here non homogeneous data f g h u naught so if it's given by l1 in time p dot sp1 in space so the right members dtu minus laplacian u gradient of p has the same regularity class of f this is L1 maximal regularity. This maximal L1 regularity was obtained by Dansha Muha for Dirichlet boundary condition with, in, with homogeneous data here 0, 0. We obtain non homogeneous data G and H, especially H. And we obtain the space H and also P on the boundary class. This is main point. It is a more detailed explanation, but I have no time. So now it's time to stop. Thank you for your attention. And I wish AOWM all the best in its development. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So are there any questions, comment? Hello. Hello? Hello. Yes. Ah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the nice talk. I wanted to ask you in your notation right in the beginning, uh, omega t. Omega t. Here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the, uh, the omega t is the domain at time p is it yes yes okay and uh, in the boundary of omega t you have an equation for eta right yes yeah after transformation how does this uh, go to when you go to lagrangian coordinates what happens to this equation where does it go uh, so um uh, uh... So oh, yn is yn is uh, yn mm, so only uh, this means only flat only that goes to the flat boundary yes 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 
So,、oh, why, why it belongs to the boundary of omega t is changed into x belongs to the boundary of omega zero. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and one more question you had a scaling critical spaces. Yes. Yeah. You mean、uh, critical with respect to Sobolev embedding? Here. No, next、uh, line. The scaling critical cases. Scaling here. Yeah. Yeah. Is it、uh, with the criticality is with respect to Sobolev embedding?、Uh, no, this is on.、Uh, I use base of space. So, including in. H dot minus one plus N over PP.、Uh -huh. not, not to use、um, it here. I don't use、um, embedding theory, but now I'd like to say this has the same scales. This space has the same scale of this space H dot minus one plus N over PP. It is more small, included space, but we can, we only show in this space, we, we cannot show in H dot minus one plus N over P space. Yes. Okay. Okay. One last question, please.、Uh, when you have、uh, non zero divergence and、uh, In the last maximal regularity slide.、Yeah. yeah, you have、uh, the boundary condition H is not zero and divergence is also not zero. Yes. Do you add、uh, something、uh, to U to bring them to homogeneous、uh, case or how do you tackle this? If we don't use in, uh, so, uh, excuse me, you mean if homogeneous with zero data? Yes. Do you reduce it to the zero data case or how do you proceed? Okay. First, we consider uh, the uh, if, uh, if, and、um, We consider first if G U naught and、uh, first we solve it.、Uh, first we solve F and U naught only. And、mm -hmm. then erase F and U naught. So、uh, we、uh, decompose the problem. Yes. Okay. With F and U naught. And then、uh, with only G, only G solve for gradient here,、uh, taking divergence here, Laplacian U equals Nabla dot G, we solve this problem then.、Yeah? So、uh, F, G, U not all gone, only remains H here. Yes. So,、oh, we can solve this problem. We can obtain the result. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions or comments? May I ask one small question on page 11? Yes. So, you say there's maximal L regularity resolves the singularities. I'm a specialist of resolution of singularity. Is it related with resolution of singularity? The resolution. So, what, what do you mean, resolve the singularity? What does it mean?、Uh, okay, uh, here uh, one over t comes from.、Yeah. So, then we, we, we taking, we, we take,、uh, uh, so we take integral, integral of one over t,、uh -huh. but It is not integral, integrability from t equals zero.、Okay. 
This is the meaning of the singularity. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. So let's thank the. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. okay. Sorry. Sorry. No, yes, Professor Shimitsu. Yes. Maybe can you show this slide with uh, uh, like second? Maybe second. I'm about it. Yes. And no, next one. You know this about uh, choosing of um, uh, next, please. Choosing okay. of um, sorry, next. It was about yes, scale invariant spaces. Yes. Uh huh. I'm about the choosing of uh, results of this uh, intersection of two uh, spaces. This is like third formula from the top and double V P R two one. Yes. What yes, yes. Uh, it's also scale invariant space, but here only uh, here only I uh, write here, but the uh, uh, excuse me. No, it was like previous. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh huh. Yes, it's here. This previous results were on big double V P R two one is oh, equal. Yes. yes, this one. Yes, exactly. It is. Yes, I just would like to ask you what was the reason to choose such kind of intersection. Uh, have you was the was the requirement of this orthonormality or what was um what was your criteria to choose this intersection like that mm -hmm. this mean okay yeah. so uh okay so oh uh, uh, the equation is time derivative time derivative and Second derivative of space. Uh, uh, for simplicity, we consider the heat equation dTU minus Laplacian U equals zero, uh, equals F. So, uh, so uh, uh, time derivative, the so time derivative, first time derivative and second space derivative. We, I see. So, I see. so uh, the uh, base space we consider LR, the LR, LP, LR in time and LP in space. It is the base space. So the first, I first. Y yes, oh. okay. yes, I, okay. I understood now. Yes, thank you. I just thought there's a main idea here to choose the criteria of this intersection like orthonormality of these spaces and you know this is important uh to follow this requirement uh to have this um continuous function everywhere i mean this uh -huh. requirement of continuity of the function everywhere in the space in intersection of these both spaces okay thank you i have understood thank you so much Okay, so there are many questions, but now, now it's time to finish. So thank you. So we, we, we let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much.